Hello everybody, Abram here. Today I'll be showing you how I approach an enemy. I'll be studying some Bridgman, then I'll move on to some photo studies, and finally I'll do some drawing from imagination, based on the previous dimension studies. This is how I always study an enemy, first with theory, then copying from a model, and finally doing something original from imagination. If you don't want to hear me explain anything, you can just mute the video and watch the drawings. Either way, I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Alright, so as you can see on screen right now, I'm gonna be drawing the torso. And I'm copying the drawings from the Bridgman's book. But I, I should clarify that before I did this thing, I read the whole thing without copying the, the individual drawings. And I suggest that you do the same, because it really helped me to understand what he's gonna cover with his book and uh, even though he's very good at uh, explaining what each muscle does and exaggerating the construction of each muscle it is still a little bit overwhelming it's a lot of information so you should try to really understand what each paragraph is trying to explain before you jump into copying the uh, drawings because otherwise there's going to be a lot of information that's just going to go over your head if you don't do that thing. All right. So I have four drawings and that's about it. All right. So after my theory work is done, I usually find a photograph of a bodybuilder and I make sure that the uh, muscle groups that I was studying are showing in the photograph. So in my case, I'm going to be using a photograph of Frank Zane and I'm going to be copying it. Uh, now, as you can all probably, as you all probably know, it's always better to draw from life, but I don't have access to life models. If you have access to life models in your town or in uh, the place you live, then try to use them as much as possible, because that's the best way to study anatomy. Now, because I don't have that, I usually use photographs of bodybuilders or if I'm studying like a single body part, like an arm of a, or a leg or even the face, I usually just stand in front of a mirror and I'll pose like one arm while I draw with the other arm or just wear shorts and pose the legs while I'm drawing them. Or if I'm drawing pro portraits, I usually ask my friends or family members to pose for me. So I suggest you do all those things if you didn't have access to real life uh, models. So that's about it. That's the Frank scene, as you can see. Okay, so finally I'm going to try and just bring it all together and use what I just learned to create an original piece. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that this is the most important part of my training right here creating new stuff. You can probably tell that I'm using a similar pose to one of the Bridgman drawings that I just made. And that's the whole point of studying for me. You know, it's bringing new information to my brain, you know, bringing new inspiration to my brain. But you need to test it. And in order to test it, you need to draw from imagination. You know, you need to draw without uh, reference for this part, you know, this part of your training, which is testing how much you've memorized from your uh, photo studies, how much you've memorized from the theory work that you just did, and how much of that information is actually useful to your practice, to the drawings that you want to make. Now, uh, in my case, you know, this is not what I would call a final piece. This is not what I would call an original piece. And most of the original drawings that I make after studying are not actually final pieces, but are original works that help me understand how much information I actually gathered from the study that I made previously. Previously, and I suggest you make the same. Now, while you watch me finish the drawing, I'll also give you a little tip that has helped me tremendously with my anatomy studies, and that is bodybuilding. Now, I know this may seem odd to a lot of you. But lifting weights can help you understand how the muscle contracts with 
each different pose that your character may do, you know, with the movements that you make, you will understand how muscles function, what the uh, uh, function of each muscle group is going to be, and that's going to improve your art tremendously. Trust me, because I started working out not not so long ago, like very recently, and it has exploded the way in which I understand anatomy now. So, you know, just a little tip, just a, a little piece of advice that has worked for me. And yeah, that's that's about it. You can see the drone's pretty much done. I can probably push this for way longer and try to finish it, but there's no need right now. If you're wondering how long this took, this was about two hours, and the bridgeman was about one hour, and the study from the photograph was about uh, one hour and a half, almost two hours. So you don't really need a lot of time to study, you know? And uh, that's good, because you want to have also time outside studying to do personal work. Well, that's pretty much it for today. It's pretty much uh, what my process is. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys got some tips and, you know, some inspiration from what I did. Um, well, guys, um, if you want to read Bridgman and learn anatomy that way, you can Google Bridgman's anatomy PDF. It is free on Google. Or you can just click the link that I'll leave on the description of this video. Anyway, thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. Don't forget to keep on drawing.